Hi everybody, it's Matt Halls of The Happy Show and Comics Unlimited in Evansville, Indiana. And uh, I'm making a video and uh, I'll give a shout to Jared Griffiths, who uh, gave me a shout out in the recent video. And he's been commenting on a lot of my videos lately and it's been cool that he's been checking out uh, not only the newer stuff I put up, but older stuff from back when. A lot of people may not realize it, who's just now coming upon my videos. But I've been on YouTube since almost the beginning of YouTube. Uh, less than a year after they had started, uh, they started in 2005, as I recall, and I've been on there pretty much since 2006, uh, like I said, it was not, not a full year after they had put up the site, so I was one of the early settlers, so to speak, in a sense, and I'm still active, as you can see, and I'm not as active as I was back then for various reasons, but I still maintain my channels. I got two channels, not only this, the Matt Hall's channel, I also have the Happy Show All, All One Word channel. There's a history behind that, and I actually do have videos about the history of of the Happy Show, and and also as it relates to uh, to YouTube. It started out as a public access television show, and that's predominantly why I started YouTube videos was to share uh, video clips originally from those, because back in those days you couldn't share uh, long long shows or whatever. You, you were limited. Everybody was limited in the very beginning. Someday, because it's now historical, um, I'm going to have to do another video. Uh, maybe I'll do it in, sometime in the near future, even, that explains the early days of YouTube. Because now, there's so many people nowadays, even if they were around at the time, don't remember or have forgotten all about it. A lot of interesting stuff in that history. Not just my own personal history. I'm talking about just with YouTube, how it was back in those days. But that's not what I want to focus on in this video, uh, because... I want to focus more on the fact that I was talking about sharing uh, some of my video collections. And when I saw Jared's video, he's from the UK. And, um, you know, he was talking about some of the, uh, you know, videos that he's gotten, including, you know, sets and stuff that were available there. And so I thought, uh, I got a lot of DVDs to share. So I'm going to do it over different videos. Uh, you know, not necessarily in a continuous line. I may, you know, take a while off and talk about other stuff, but... I figured I'd start this one with some of the videos I have that are predominantly UK videos. Not all, not, well, let me put it this way. There, there, there might be American uh, disc that were of UK shows or stuff I actually got from the UK. Um, or, or it's just, you know, it's just British related and so forth. Um, that's not all that these are. There's stuff from America and all that too. It's just, but that's... Uh, uh, why I decided to focus on that since uh, Jared was talking about those I went ahead and decided to go with that at this point and uh, Also this 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 particular section Even though it's a mish a mishmash of some stuff. There, there is a theme like I said mostly uh, There's actually it's almost international because there's a uh, Canadian videos too, which you'll see here in a second what I mean and uh, then there's other stuff towards the bottom uh, beyond or that's doesn't fit that theme. Like I said, there's I do put group some stuff together, but uh, by by some kind of logic. But sometimes it's just there because whatever. At the top here, I'll just go ahead and explain since we're, we're most, more or less going to talk about this shelf here. I guess the stuff over here we'll worry about later because it will be too long a video and all that to get into. Um, now the top is is American shows uh, and. American shows based off British shows because he mentioned Steptoe and Son. I have Sanford and Son, the complete set that was uh, based off of Steptoe and Son. And I discussed that in a video a decade ago that he was talking about. Uh, That's just a clear, <laughs> clear sign over there. Uh, these, I actually, I never watched True Blood. I've got these, honestly, from buying a collection of stuff. And I don't know that I'm, I, I, maybe I should watch it. I, these ones I actually wasn't, buying to watch i was buying to resell at some point just because they're part of a larger collection they're up here just because where else was i gonna put them uh, but sopranos that's another one I've, i haven't watched but i heard it's really good so i'm gonna check and that's another one i got from a collection now everything else here i think is actually stuff i bought because i wanted to have it in my collection uh, you know, there's times you won't see too many things in my collection or as part of my sh on my shelving that isn't something I actually bought or cared for them by myself. Uh, but since I do buy for a living to resell, mostly comic books, toys and such, that's what I do as a living. Um, so you'll see, you know, some stuff from time to time, 
uh, some of my shows that might be more along those lines, even though sometimes I keep them separate. Um, but but this stuff is, you know, I got the Married with Children series right there, uh, which I know people have their own opinions one way or another, but I think it was truly one of the funniest shows, at least in its heyday, uh, during the best seasons, before it became a parody of itself, like, too many, too many long-running shows can run that risk, and it did become a parody of itself. But for uh, from seasons roughly two, definitely seasons three up to like seven or so, it was pretty much one of the best shows on as far as just pure comedy. One of the best pure comedy sitcoms of of not only the era but I think of all time still. Even the even if uh, in modern culture some stuff may not hold up as far as whether it's as acceptable nowadays. People get so uptight on things. But anyway, got the Game of Thrones uh, set, but that last season, it kind of killed my interest. I, it ended kind of on such a bad note, that one of the best, speaking about one of the best series, it was, and then it crashed and burned. So American Psycho and Star Trek in the Darkness, this is out of place. This was a extra disc, I think, is why I have it over here. Cheers, another great classic sitcom. The Jeffersons are over here, WKRP. WKRP, you know, I don't want to spend too much time going on about every single thing on the you know that I have here because each thing could take a whole video unto itself to talk about its history and such. But WKRP was another classic American sitcom. It didn't perform well in the ratings in the beginning, though it was critically successful and there and definitely had an audience. Um, and but it was based off of DJs at a radio station. And they used real clips, you know, real music, you know, rock and roll music from the era, which this was right in that time period, late 70s, early 80s, where the rights issues hadn't yet got quite figured out. And so they weren't anticipating that there would be a home video market in years to come. And so it was hard to get the rights for a lot of music. So this is not fully unedited, but, it's the, but the Shout Factory set that came out a few years ago is the closest and the only available set you can get officially released set with uh, closest to the least edits because of music rights. And speaking of music rights, going back to Married with Children, the first couple of seasons disc I have here I still have Love and Marriage sang by uh, Frank Sinatra, which was the theme song throughout the whole course of the original airing of the series. But I guess they lost the rights and they have a generic kind of sound-like song that's on the other disc. It's not too distracting. It's not as as integral or vital to the integral, uh, <laughs> vital to the series as the WKRP uh, music would have been, um, but still, it's one of those things. So I'll get to this other set here now. Oh, I had this out of place. We'll get back to this here in a second. But <laughs> being a, I'm being a stickler here. Now, as far as uh, as far as the British thing goes. You got the w, 007 James Bond. What's funny is I've always been a casual fan of, of James Bond to some degree. I grew up during the Roger Moore era, and I do have a fondness for him, even though I understand that a lot of people, you know, because he was more uh, campy and such, uh, don't care as much for that era. But I, I still have a fondness for it. And, of course, got the Sean Connery and then the later stuff. I, I'm more of the uh, stuff up through uh, Sean Connery up through... The era of of uh, I'll call him blank Roger Moore uh, than I do of later stuff. I don't have it as complete later on, but you know I, I thought well what the heck once I decided to go ahead and get those I decided to go ahead and uh, get the other later ones too, including all the way up through uh, you know the Skyfall and all that. Um, I'm removing some of these because they're stuck behind as you can see on these shelves. And I'll take some of the stuff down from it too to make it easier to look at. Now here's something I'm going to point out to you. A lot of uh, people in, uh, over in Britain will be familiar with, but not as much in the United States. Here is um, you got Steve Coogan who played Alan Partridge. Well, I first became aware of who Steve Coogan was, believe it or not, by this movie, which is Hamlet uh, Two, which is a goofy, funny movie. It's, um, not like the greatest comedy necessarily, but it's fun enough. And it got me, uh, you know, like I said, exposed me to him. I didn't, um, most Americans, I don't think are aware of who Alan Partridge is. Whereas I think most of you in the UK, he's like almost an icon or is an icon there, I suppose, in a sense. 
so whenever I came across, I think it was this set here of Alan, I'm Alan Partridge. I came across that, you know, at a used video store here. And this, it's funny because this is a British disc and you don't usually see that in the American stores, uh, in, you know, it was used, like I said, so somebody bought it probably online or maybe they were, you know, from Britain or came, brought, bought it over there. And so I was familiar with him, like I said, through that other movie. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a try. And, um, and I enjoyed it a lot. So, um, I, I got that. And then I, oh, and this, this is a bummer though. I'm going to buy a new disc. I actually was going to try and play this the other night. And so I have to go online and buy another disc. And it got cracked because it was on so tight on this thing. That, that kind of torqued me off. But anyway, because I was into that, I went ahead and got wrapped up into the whole Alan Partridge thing. So I got series two. And I kind of liked them equally. And this was a sitcom, traditional, uh, more or less like a traditional sitcom. And, uh... Then I got the Knowing Me, Knowing You, which preceded those sitcoms. Uh, there's, it's fun that there's he's continued to play that character as kind of a pseudo-real character, though, you know, uh, Alan Partridge is totally fictitious. But he uh, started out on, uh, oh, what was the new show? I'm going blank. I didn't even have the set somewhere here. I thought I had it with these. Uh, of, I'm going blank, but he did that uh, series that was like a fake news uh, show over in Britain. And he played a sports announcer. I'm not into sports, but, you know, he was still funny on that. And then he spun off as the character into, and I guess in the, in that reality, into this Knowing Me, Knowing You talk show, which had its um, a season of that, or series, I guess as it would be called over in the UK, right? And then, uh, like I so said, got the two there. And then I even got his, his the the autobiography of Alan Partridge, which I don't have up here because it's an actual book, and I got the the movie, which over here is called Alpha Papa. I think it was just called Alan Partridge over in Britain. I'm not for sure. I have to look again. So I got those. Um, one thing I don't have on here, but I'll mention real quickly, is the IT Crowd, which is another one I really enjoy, and I just uh, never got it on DVD yet. I streamed it a lot off of. Uh, uh, um, going, well, I'm going blank a lot today off of uh, Netflix, and um, but anyway, and um, I got Hot Fuzz and Paul, which you know, those those are uh, with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, and those guys are pretty funny. And plus, you know, how can he go wrong with Simon Pegg? He's a comic fan, he's a uh, you know, said that I think in interviews and such, so so already, you know, I take a liking to him just for that. And the very classic to me, uh, yeah, fall down. No. <laughs> Those the young ones I discovered when I was in high school in the 80s. Uh, and over here in America, they didn't air them, I don't believe, at all in the, until like the mid 80s uh, on MTV. And that's where I first saw it. In the UK, it, it started, I think, in 1982. And then they had 1984. They had two series that ran um, those years. And, um, Anyway, so so it was originally on MTV in America in the the mid late eighties, and then it, and then they start showing it on uh, Comedy Central, I believe, in the nineties when it was called the Comedy Central or the Comedy Network. Anyway, it was on there. So that that's another one there, and then of course there's the Mr. Bean stuff. Um, I know it's that in Jared's collection too. Uh, you know, Mr. Bean. So I got the complete series of that. I got uh, the movie with Johnny English. Now, I don't want to sound blasphemy, but I'm not really a fan so much of the Johnny English, which is funny, you know, because you see the James Bond stuff, and of course it's a riff off that, but but definitely love the Bean stuff. So, not the, Bean, the first Bean movie, because I like it, but it shows you an example of, of how you can do the same jokes and how the execution is everything. The execution on this these disc of some of the stuff that is repeated in the movie, they're great on these. They're kind of not they're too broad in a sense on these. And and I understand part of it is they were trying to appeal to an American audience, and I guess that's why they went broader. Well, I'm one of those Americans that I like British humor as British as it can be, you know, because to me I get I get a kick out of it. It it does appeal to me. So um and so that's why 
this was less uh, I, nuanced or whatever than his regular uh, series. But this was more closer to it. The Beans goes on uh, Mr. Beans Holiday. The Mr. Beans Holiday has felt more like the, the TV series did to me. So I did enjoy that. And though these are, they have their own differences. Some of these are going to fall here. Some, you know, because it's an animated series, it's not quite the same as pure Mr. Bean, but I do get the animated series, and they're fun. Okay, and uh, let's see. Um, some of the disc at the end, like it says, a mix match, so these are all big meat theme. Got more British stuff at the back here. But just for the meantime, I'll just say we got the Just Shoot Me. Uh, seasons one and two, which was a fun television series. Got the Weird Al show and uh, Weird Al Yankovic live. I've seen him live uh, a couple of times and he's great. Truly a uh, guy brings on all ages too. You see people, you know, young little kids all the way up to grandparents and everything in between. Everybody gets into Weird Al, thankfully, because he just seems to transcend the generations. And this is his ultimate video collection and UHF which has become a cult film, even though it initially didn't perform well at the box office because it came out, partly because it came out in 1989, which was a big movie, uh, big big summer, the summer of 89 was big for movies. You had Ghostbusters 2, Batman in 1989, um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Um, There's a bunch of movies. There was a bunch of movies that year, so it got swallowed up in that. And... Uh, this seems almost timely to mention. Um, got Dave Chappelle's shows because as of the time of the video, he had just gotten a, attacked on stage, which that's not too cool. But anyway, so I got the Chappelle's shows. I got Hep, which is a burnt disc from my pal Artie Barnes from Barnes and Barnes, the musical novelty group, and this is their concert, and it's uh it's direct from him. It's you know it's not officially released. That's why it's brown disc, but he is. The copyright order. And it, technically, it's not bootleg because it's actually from the source. It's just that's the only way it's available. And I got it from him actually through eBay, from his own eBay account. Um, this is a collection of movies which I only bought to get, really only bought to get one movie. And and that's because I had this movie. Um, it's The Wrong Guy with Dave Foley. And Dave Foley is part of the Kids in the Hall comedy troupe which is a Canadian comedy troupe, which also you'll see on the shelf here. That's where some of my, the Canadian films also I'm out comes in. Um, he, he was in this film and I had a version of it that was on another disc, but it was formatted for full frame, which I never liked anyway. Even when I, even when the TV screens were the old standard format, I was the one who said, I, I can deal with those black bars because I know I'm seeing the full picture. You remember they used to have black bars on the top and bottom. Just by um, the flip side of that is nowadays with the widescreen TV, I hate when they take a, a standard ratio film from back then, or like mostly TV shows were in that ratio, and they want to stretch it out. I want it preserved in the exact aspect ratio it's supposed to be. If it has black bars on the sides or top them up, I don't care. I'm fine with that because I am actually know I'm seeing either the full picture or an undistorted picture that way, and that, uh, that's the way I would rather see it. Anyway, that's why I bought this collection, because this collection actually had it formatted for widescreen. So, the way it was presented in the theater. So, it wasn't a super successful movie, but I think it's a quirky, funny film. You also got a bunch of other goofy things on there, like Kazam, and It's Pat. I like different Saturday Night Live related movies, but It's Pat was blah. And, and Cabin Boy, which is kind of quirky. I, I kind of like it, but... It's not really that great, but there's just like enough quirkiness in that. So, and Cabin Boy was uh, uh, Chris. I'm going. I'm going blank a lot today. I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> what's his name again? Uh, Chris Elliott, the, you know the son of uh, Ray. Is it Ray Elliott, Bob and Ray? Or you know, the, it's an old comedy group, Bob and Ray. But there's the son of, of I think it was. Uh, Ray was the Ray Elliot. It was his son. <laughs> uh, so, and if it was Bobby Elliot, I'm get screwing up. Uh, I'm getting rusty, like I said. It was one of the two. <laughs> this is my Monty Python set. This is all the episodes of Monty Python. 
they since this set that came out, they have a condensed version that's much smaller. So that happens a lot. Like even the McMahon with children and other stuff, they'll eventually release these complete sets that are on less uh, disc or less packaging. But what the hell, this is one I originally grabbed, so I keep it. Um, and so we carry on with Monty Python and go through the movies: The Holy Grail, The Life of Brian, The Meaning of Life. And those related, Eric the Viking and Yellow Bear, because they're directed by either Terry Gilliam or Terry Jones or anybody else connected with the with with the Mount Monty Python. We got a fish called Wanda again related there to the Monty Python. The not last at last nineteen forty eight show and do not adjust your set both uh, British television shows that featured members of that would become the python group and uh, this is where they started out on television for the most part and not the nine o'clock news which has a bunch of famous british comedians including Ro uh, Ro <laughs> roland atkinson i'm being horrible today uh, uh mr bean himself you know right there and so you got those Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, their British TV show, which also has an appearance by John Lennon in one of the episodes back when he was still a Beatle. And uh, the British Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy television series. Much better than the movie version. The movie version might have a higher budget, but this was closer to the actual uh, story as it was done on the radio show and in the novels. Um, Till Death Do Us Part, this is the show that All in the Family was based off of in the United States. Uh, the thing about this and the Sanford and Son thing with Steptoe and Son that I want to point out is this was, uh, I watched, I haven't watched every episode of Till Death, the, the, Till Death Do Us Part, uh, Us Do Part, Till Death Us Do Part. <laughs> this is what I get when I'm just almost rambling through these. I, I get kind of flustered and say it wrong. Anyway, till death us do part. Um, you know, it, it, with, with this and like the Steptoe Son, the American series, people will debate whether, whether one's better than the other. First off, to me, they're both, you know, are all these series are great. They're they're unique unto themselves, even if the premise, they're, oh no, no. <laughs> even if uh, the premise was, taken from the original show, uh, like this case, you know, Long Family was based off of these, and some of the earliest episodes might have been based off an actual script from the original show, just retooled for the American market with the new new cast. Um, they definitely became their own things. Um, you know, like like this, Alf Garnett and his wife, they're, they're quite a bit different from Archie um, and, and Edith, definitely Edith. Um, you know, the character of Edith uh, is, is vastly, I think, different, really, than the wife, and the, I mean, other than they're both put upon by their husband. Um, and like like the others, uh, like both both Sanford and Son and uh, All in the Family would develop their own supporting cast and, and such. A lot of times, like this show and Step Tone Son especially, they didn't really have a supporting cast. Other than the father and the son, there was in Step Tone Son, there wasn't really... Um, a bunch of regular recurring members, uh, other supporting cast members. And with San Francisco, there was a rotating cast of supporting cast members that was as popular in some cases as the leads. Um, so they, so the, there's definitely a reason to watch. You are not you wouldn't be watching the same shows no matter what, even if you watch the same episode based off those shows. Um, I'm getting too far into this, like I said, because that would become another video in itself again. But that, but anyway, so I got that. I'm trying to keep these in place. Now I'm getting them all out of order. Speaking of Step Toe and Son, Jared asked me if I had seen the movies. Okay, now you won't see the TV series up here, though I should rectify that. And also, like IT crowd, I should get down DVD. <clears throat> I've got <clears throat> video files <clears throat> of every episode. But I don't actually have the actual disc. Um, but I do have the disc of the movies, which, for whatever reason, Anchor Bay. Yeah, Anchor Bay, which was a cheap DVD company. They put a lot of dollar discs and stuff. For whatever reason, 
in the you know in the United States, it, it distributed the Steptoe movies. I say for what reason? Because the TV series ain't out here. Um, most people, just like with uh, with with Alan Partridge, most Americans don't even know what Steptoe's Son is, other than maybe they've heard that it was the Sanford Son was based off of it. So I did find it funny that they actually released in the United States the, this version because this is actually a Region One disc, specifically a Region One disc. I am. Um, I don't actually have a Region 2 disc player, so some people might wonder, well, with British disc and other foreign discs, what do you do? Computers, you know, you can watch them on computer, which I can hook up to my TV and see on the widescreen if I uh, have a huge TV if I want to. Computers, uh, not only can you change the settings in the media player, which you may not want to do too often because then it permanently locks for whatever stupid reason in one region, but more a better way to do it without having to worry about uh, uh, the computer being locked into one setting, if you have a computer that will play disc, is you can get the VLC media player, which is free, and it will play any region disc. And you play, you can play re regions, you know, like all regions disc on your computer using VLC player. Uh, got Are You Being Served, which over here in the United States was shown on the PBS, the public broadcast system. Not to be confused with public access television, which is what the Happy Show was on. They're two distinct things. But um, anyway, Are You Being Served was just like My Python. Early My Python was uh, put on public uh, on public broadcasting system, PBS. Uh, I was almost going to say public access. No, um, They were put on there, to, and that was where a lot of United, people in the United States first got exposed to these comedies. They weren't on the regular networks. <laughs> and uh, I honestly haven't watched a lot of Ali G yet, but I got this because of, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen, because I, I like Bruno OK, and I definitely like Borat, so I got some of his stuff there. Now we're leading more into the Canadian stuff again, because Kids in the Hall, I got, uh, I'm missing this case. So it's in another kind of case there, because I'm missing one of the cases. Don't know where it disappeared to. I got all seasons of Kids in the Hall. And then, uh, let's see. Got Same Guys, New Dresses, which was a live show. Tour of Duty, another live show. Oh, and there's the wrong guy. That's the one with the format where if you were to watch it on a widescreen TV, you're going to have uh, its, for, its format as if it's uh, standard. So, it says widescreen. Oh, no, okay. It says widescreen in here. Let me correct myself. Now I know, remember what the deal is. It is is format for widescreen but not really what that means is it was format for widescreen on the old standard tvs which get this there's that means when you watch an old screen tv you see the black bars at the top and bottom because of shapes but but you see the full screen widescreen but it i forget what the what the i think anamorphic widescreen is the one where it will actually fit a widescreen tv this was was format for standard TVs, even though it's widescreen image, which means those black bars are actually on the frame for in, on this disc, which means if I put it on, uh, what you call it, on a regular widescreen TV now, a modern TV, you're going to get what they call, I think it's a window box effect, if I got that correct, you because it's already got black bars on top. Then it was really actually format for standard TVs. It's just they had the black bar so you could see the widescreen. So what that means is you get a whole black border. Huh. <laughs> so, so it's even worse because, because that makes the widescreen even smaller. So you are still seeing the widescreen picture, but you're seeing it shrunk down. It's kind of what they did with the Star Wars um, sets where they had the bonus um, Star Wars films. The, from the original un, untouched special edition, non-special edition films that Lucas granted to go ahead and put as special editions. He did it in that same fashion where there was actually, if I remember correctly, the prints where those formatted, those Star Wars films formatted for standard TVs, though they were presenting the widescreen uh, image, it was formatted for the TV, so it had the same effect that this one does, which in other words, is annoying. Um, I would like to see a true widescreen presentation, one that's anamorphic or whatever, that's made where you can watch it on a 
regular television. Um, I think I'll save the rest of these for the next day because most, for the most part, I got through, uh, you know, I've got, I got other stuff that could be considered uh, uh, British related, like the Beatles stuff, but this is music stuff down here. And so I think I'll save that for another time because this is, this is running pretty long and get to other comedies and such. So, um, that, that goes through this shelf and, um, I don't know if there's too much else I missed. Out of the, I'm mentioning here that that probably could have been on this shelf, but maybe on another shelf. If it is, I'll mention that when I get to that. Okay, I think I've rambled on enough, and uh, thanks for watching. And go check out Jared's channel. I'll go ahead and put a link on the on the bottom of the page for that. And uh, anyway, yeah, thanks. Yay!